Chapter 29, The Year-Long Freelance Roadmap and Opportunity Calendar. For the first year or two of being a freelancer, you'll likely feel like you're hustling around the clock, and it'll be a big win to carve out work-free weekends and start hitting and surpassing your income goals. As you settle into your routine of being a full-time freelancer, you'll likely start to notice annual patterns and be able to plan out your year of opportunity and rest so you can take targeted sabbaticals, vacation when clients are fewer, and know when to be available to ramp up and capitalize on a lot of incoming work. Here's how. The Annual Calendar of Opportunity As a freelance writer, I've found that all of my startup and corporate writing projects fall into the same patterns. I get the biggest increase of new clients during November-February as people are wrapping up one year and beginning the next. When budgets are fresh in January or expiring in December, corporate startup clients also seem to spend the most during this period of New Year optimism or are in the end-of-the-year rush. I have not had a slow holiday season ever in all my years of freelancing. Everyone seems to be extra caffeinated and ready to hire help as they try to reach their goals for the end of one year or trying to get ahead for the next. My slowest months are during May-July, which is graduation and vacation season. Most companies are run by people with children. Hey, I don't make the rules. It was just the tea leaves I was given. Then things pick up fast again in late July slash early August as kids go back to school and the last two fiscal quarters of the year loom large. However, in my memoir, Ghostwriting Work, the opposite trend is true. My memoir clients most often hire me in summer when their day jobs are slower and they can devote more time to working on their book with me. I've gotten almost all of my memoir clients during summertime. So it seems that people prioritize personal needs in the summer, whereas business-related writing work slows down. Diversify your services or plan your budgets based on that information. Another interesting trend I've noticed is that there is always an increase in clients during the beginning slash end of months. This happens as people are realizing the current month is ending, the next month is beginning, and they're driven to either make up for lost time or get ahead of the curve, compared to the low-energy middle of the month where new clients dip slightly. People care about beginnings and ends. Who knew? As you're building your freelance career, start to take notice of patterns with clients and client inquiries in your niche. See how they're affected by the economy at large, different seasons, industry trends, and more. Knowing this will help you organize your efforts and energy to best capture momentum so that you're always booked and as busy as you want to be as a freelancer. How to make your freelancer's year work for you. When you know these patterns, you'll notice your year begins to unlock. Start to plan your vacations in the middle of the month during slow seasons so you'll feel less guilty turning down incoming leads when you're on holiday. Know when to rest and when to ramp up, and use your annual tracking calendar to monitor the health of your freelance business. Knowing what's expected during a time of year or month will help you audit a lower-than-expected month. Is May slow because you have fewer clients than usual, or just because all your clients are attending their kids' graduations and planning family vacations? Part of increasing your revenue as a freelancer is understanding your client base, their needs, and their timing. This will help you make the most of your year and even double your income when you're in step with your calendar of opportunity. Amy's Field Notes, Digital Nomad Travel Planning. On my website, amysudo.com, you'll find a deep archive of my favorite places to travel as a digital nomad and tips and tricks for where to stay and what to do in each city. If you're a freelance writer who loves to travel, use the beginning of the year to plan out your estimated travel budget, where you want to stay, and how much each trip will cost. This will give you something to look forward to even if you're just planning weekend trips. As a digital nomad, I try to plan my fun travel during the summer when things are slower. That way I can enjoy being more social and doing things out in the world. At the beginning and end of the year, I try to stay in less stimulating places so that I can get deep work done and prioritize focusing on projects I'm working on. You might not know what's the best flow of your year right away, but that's okay. Over time, you'll start to understand what works best for you and your schedule. I create these voiceovers using Wondercraft AI, a text-to-speech tool that speaks in your voice so you can create more podcasts, audiobooks, and voiceovers, all by just dropping in some text. Use my code SUDO50, S-U-T-O-5-0, or the link in the description below to get 50% off your Wondercraft AI subscription. I get a small commission if you use my code, so thanks for your support. Sending creativity and good writing vibes your way. Amy.